You see how windy it is. <laughs> yeah, and it's going to be worse over there. I need to save my powers for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> save my powers for tomorrow. <laughs> I love it. We had burgers, burgers and wraps, because America. Because <laughs> <laughs> America. <laughs> Sorry. So breakfast burger? It. Yes. <laughs> or like a regular No, a breakfast burger. Okay. I didn't know there was any difference, but I learned something new. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. So Steve, go ahead and briefly introduce yourself and then we will jump in and get started. Do I need to look at you guys or? Just look at us, yeah. Yeah. Well, my name is Steve Weider. Um, I recently became a silver medalist at the Olympics 2021. Um, world champion, indoor with team, European champion, outdoor, myself. Um, I've won Vegas. Awesome. So, man with a fantastic archery career, a lot of people know about you. Tell us a little bit about how we met and how you first got involved with Ramrods and maybe what kind of attracted you to be interested in working with us. Actually, I first saw it with Colin Klimicek. Yeah. He had the Ramrods and I couldn't get them anywhere at the Netherlands, so I thought I'd just shoot you guys a message and see if we can work something out or whatever. And I believe that's about seven years ago right now, so I've been with you guys ever since. Was it was it something you were looking at for for wind specifically, or like what, um, like something thinner? Mostly thinner, yeah. thinner and stiffer. I'm the type of guy that shoots a lot of weight on his bow, so for me, I was always looking to get the perfect setup, so to go as as thin as possible with the amount of weight that I'm running. All right, so, so you mentioned already the wind, the thinness, the stiffness for the, the, the amount of weight you're shooting. Um, how does your particular setup right now, I guess, kind of lend you the confidence for going to some of the biggest tournaments in the world? Obviously, the Olympics, obviously shooting in huge matches. Um, what about how you put it together, put your, your stabilizer setup together, helps you feel like you're ready for those competitions? Uh, normally I always go with the long rods, so I have a 30 inch up front and a 15 at the back. So I always look for the perfect aim. For me it's, it's all about aiming and, and shot execution. And when I'm not aiming exactly on the spot that I want, I just simply can't execute my shots. So that's, that's the most important thing. I always trying and tweaking and do whatever I need to do to have the best setup for that particular day. So most, most of the times at indoor season, I'm running about six ounces more on my total setup, just to have it a little bit more heavy. And when I go out, I always take it off. Okay, so it is interesting. We hadn't talked about a slight change between indoor and outdoor before. Um, is there any particular kind of, uh, you mentioned aiming as being like a core focus of what would make you change your stabilizers, your, your whole setup to help you with that. Um, is there any other kind of general philosophy you have about stabilization that you try to try to enact with, with how you put together your stuff? I do really feel like when you like shoot the long rods at the back that the bow is reacting a little bit slow. Definitely slower than sh when you're shooting with the 12 inches. But I always try to get the feeling of sh the execution with the, the 12 inch stabilizer so that it jumps really fast out of my hand. So that's why I'm using a little bit more weight up front than most archers because when I shoot my shot, I just really want, want to pull, like that, that my bow pulls out of my hand and just goes forward at any time, any case. So I always try to get the perfect balance of mostly aiming and the way the bow reacts. And is there any specific feeling or, or nature of performance that lets you know your bow is ready to go compete and you don't want to change anything else? Mostly when I see back in my aiming pattern that I don't have to be exactly in the middle to still hit the middle. Like every archer that shoots at a, at a high level knows the feeling that they can do whatever they want and the arrows are going to go straight in. And that's when I know it's time to go. So that gives you the confidence of saying, I know this bow is forgiving. I think that's the term we usually kind of use, like where you make a little mistake, but it still kind of wants to go back towards the middle. But once you get to that point, then you're like, okay, I know I can 
trust the bow to do its job. Now I can focus on me. I can go compete at my best. Yeah, exactly. But I just arrived here in Yankton, but I see the wind, so it's probably not going to be that easy this, this time, yeah. but it's going to be the way it is and we'll figure something out, I, I guess. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the athletes to the field for the recurve men's quarterfinal match number one. So what was the point in time that you decided you wanted to dedicate your life to archery? Was there a particular moment that you felt like, this is what I'm going to do, and I know this is the right move? When I started archery at the Netherlands, um, I shot at, at a local club that was only 25 meters, one arrow at a time. And that's what I did for the first seven year, years of my archery career. Then I needed to go for a new bow and the shop owner asked me why I didn't shoot 70 meters. And I actually never heard of it. I was like, what's 70 meters? And he explained that, and that was the time when I went to my first ever 70 meter competition. And I was 18 back then, so pretty late for an international archer. But I went there and I went pretty good. And I think I became 16 or something from the Netherlands, which is pretty good at the Netherlands. And ever since I've, I've kept on working, shooting the 70 meters, and I really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, after a while, there was a, a regular day at the Olympic Training Center that you could just sign up for and, and go there and just shoot like how a professional archer would shoot there. So the, 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 the coach or head coach saw me over there and he never even heard of my name because I didn't shot any competitions previously. And he saw me there shooting and I was shooting a nine average at 70 meters, which is okay if you start at, the, um, at a team and you still need to grow. So he asked me if I wanted to go to the, to the team. And I was like, mm, no, I, I don't know. Uh, I had a full-time job back then and I was just working and I had a, a whole different life in front of me, I thought. But after a while, he asked me again, and I was like, yeah, why not? I'm just gonna try it and see how far I can get. So I s stopped my job, at least at the full time. So I went part-time working and part-time training. And after a while, we just did a lot of training and, and everything went way better than I expected and that my coach expected. So we went on to go to the first World Cup in Shanghai, which I won. This man, a total unknown. Thrown in for a bit of experience, the 20-year-old Steve Weiler, his first ever senior event. What on earth is he doing here? And he's got it as well. Yeah, Weiler match it. I mean, he's certainly not down on his knees and out. Far from it. Oh, that's snatched. But he's still got away with it. He's got such a strong, aggressive shot. It's great. It's just missed. It is. It's like... Now, can Wyler find a 10 here? Dying. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Dying. We are one arrow away from one of the great stories in world archery. Kim needs to send a message. He's missed. Doesn't. He's missed. Wow. Steve Wyler, the unheard of 20 year old, needs nine for gold. Come on. He's he nailed it. it. Absolutely <laughs> Phenomenal. brilliant. Phenomenal. Look at that. You didn't hear about him in the build-up. Of course, they threw him in for experience, but everybody in world archery will know the name of Steve Weiler. The 20-year-old Dutchman has come from nowhere to go top of the podium in a World Cup event. Absolutely unbelievable. But what a performance. In his no, first senior event, I don't he's come so. and taken, he's, he's scooped the pot. And that was my time to become a professional archer. I went home, quit my job, and that was it. One other question that I've just been curious about is for the population and size of the Netherlands, not really being a massive country with a huge population, they seem to turn out a lot of really high level archers. Do you think there's anything special about the program there or the culture there that's creating so many good athletes? I truly believe that's more the culture. At the Netherlands, nobody really cares about what you're doing unless you're winning. So if you became second, third or fourth, nobody gives a shit. 
if I'm allowed to say it. So everyone just wants to be the best every time, all the time. And we are fortunate enough to have a lot of good people at the Netherlands who are all just world-class athletes. So everything that's coming from below needs to work up against those people to even get to the team. Like if you get on a team at the Netherlands, you know you have a chance at the medal internationally. Otherwise, they just let you at home. So it's, it's really hard to get there and, and a lot of the times really, really rough. But it also makes us harder, I guess. So we are used to work as hard as we can, as much as we can, every day and every, every time that we got. And I believe that's the, almost the perfect recipe for like, being a good archer. But it is a 10, a second consecutive perfect score for Steve Avaya gives him the set points and the gold medal here in Nîmes. An interesting gold medal match against his teammate, a repeat of Papendal, but this time it's Steve Vaya who walks away top dog. So this time at the World Championships, we have a complete new team. We have a chef that's retired and uh, Rick isn't here this time. So we are here with, with Gijs and Jona. Gijs has been to the Olympics as well. And for Jona, it's his first uh, international senior event. So we are all really, really excited to see how that's going to go. Um, it's, it's a good test, definitely, after the Olympics. This is, this is the first competition that we have after the Olympics. So we are really trying to focus on 2024. And I believe that we need to work with a, with a team that, like, in the eyes of, of almost everybody is going to be the team at, at 2024. And of course, we still have Rick and we still have another, a lot of other different really good archers at the Netherlands. So maybe it will change, maybe it doesn't. I'm not sure yet, but we, we just need to focus on, it, on the team that we have here right now. And I do really trust those guys. So I hope for the best this week. Awesome, we're looking forward to see how it goes. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. So in the Olympics this year, winning that mixed team medal with your teammate, and with that being the historic first mixed team event in the Olympics for our sport, um, tell me about what that means for you personally and, and how you view the impact of that on the sport moving forward. For me personally, it means like everything. The, um, the Olympics is the biggest sports event in history and in the future, I guess. Uh, I don't believe that there's going to be anything bigger or better than the Olympics. And to shoot in a mixed team competition, definitely these days with everything gender neutral and, and stuff like that, I believe that women and men can do the exact same thing at 70 meters with a bow. So for me, shooting with Gabby, um, it was a real privilege to, to be able to win a medal. Definitely when it's the first uh, mixed team competition uh, at the Olympics, for archery at least. Um, I do really believe that, that people are equal and, and stuff like that. So for me, it's, it's awesome to shoot with a, with a female. And if you ask me, we should do something like that more in all the sports. When we, when we look at the Olympics, when we look at medalists, when we look at people who've been doing really well, it's easy for maybe people who haven't been part of the journey or haven't been there the whole time to think it's just this trajectory that's just up and they just always shoot well and archery is always easy and they just are trying to win all the time. Um, but having done archery, I think a lot of people who are gonna listen to this or watch this recognize that it's much more complicated. There's a lot of ups and downs. There's a lot of things that you learn along the way when no one's watching, essentially. And we wanted to ask what were some of the biggest challenges you face and kind of how they shaped you as a person or what you've learned from them? Actually, I've been down the drain completely. I've been depressed because of archery. I just didn't want to shoot anymore. It was back in 2018, I became number one of the world in the world ranking. And I felt like I always had a big picture in my, in my mind that when you become number one of the world, everything is going to be better and you get better deals and better everything, but nothing happened. Nobody really cared. And for me, it was such a big hit to take that I just wanted to stop. I didn't felt like doing it anymore. So it was a really difficult moment and it took me completely of 2019 to get over it. 
So actually for me, it was pretty good that the Olympics were delayed because I wasn't in a good shape and my head wasn't at the right place. I was still winning medals back at the time, but I didn't enjoy it. I remember winning the World Cup final in Vegas in 2019. Centimeter 10 ring about the size of a silver dollar. World Indoor Series champion for men's recurve, Steve Weiler will head home a happy man. I just went to the room and tried to medal in a in the corner and that's it. So I was really in a bad space at the time, but I went over it and now I just enjoy shooting archery and for me, it's the thing I, I love most, and that's why I do it, and that's why I kept on doing it. I'm, I'm just in love with archery and the way um, you can see the immediate, the immediate result of yourself um, um, training and being at the best place you can ever be. That, that's, for me, that's the nicest, nicest thing about archery. When you, you release your shot, you know exactly where it's going and what's going on. And I believe that's the, the nicest thing about archery. In a follow-up to that, you mentioned a little bit about just kind of rediscovering your love for the sport and just these, these more present, more intimate, personal moments with the sport that keep you really engaged and excited and, and happy with what you're doing. Uh, is there anything else that you say that you, that you would describe as, as really motivating for you? We, we all go through different points in our career where maybe when I was this age, this motivated me more, and when I'm this age, this motivated me. But what are the one or two of the key things in your life that have motivated you to, to do all the stuff that you've done? At first, like when I started with a team, I just wanted to be the best of the team, and then you revolve in being the best of Europe and the best of the world and anything. But I accomplished all of it. So for me, that was like the, a limit reached, and then I just switch my mind on getting a medal at every international tournament that there was. And that happened at the Olympics, that was the last that I was missing. So now I'm gonna try to win like gold at every tournament that there is. So I'm still not done in the sport and I really feel like there's a lot more to do and to, to train for. But you always need to set goals that are almost unreachable. And it's just the best feeling in the world when you reach one of them. So for, I think, the last question, um, you've been through a lot of interviews, both this year and in previous years. A lot of people asking you questions, focusing on different aspects of what they think their, their viewers might be interested in. Um, is there any question that you haven't been asked, that you wish you've been asked or wish you've been able to talk a little more about? I would actually say the mental health and the, the mental health aspect in sports in total. Um, like I mentioned previously, I've been down the drain and I've talked with a lot of people in sports and from any countries at all. And I see that a lot of people cooperate with the same problems over and over again. Not even just professional archers, but people in daily life as well. I truly believe that in the 2021 20, that we're living right now, everybody is just too stressed and too like everybody's working so hard to achieve their goals that they forget to live in the moment. Um, if there's something I want to give to, to everybody, it's just step back and relax a little bit more sometimes. It's, sometimes it's just good the way you are and everything is gonna work out. I like it. I can uh, definitely say from our personal experience, all three of us, um, archery has been some of the, the best times we've ever had and some of the worst times. And it's, it's hard to communicate that to people. I don't know if I even talking to, to them have this, the right language all the time, but it's, uh, it's, I think, really helpful for us as athletes to at least talk about it amongst ourselves and recognize that nobody's immune, everybody's a human, and we can all, you know, be at the top of the world and at the bottom of the world on different days. Exactly. And especially these days with the social media. When you go on social media, everybody is having the perfect life and everything is good but it's all fake. So <laughs> I think once you finally accept that, that your whole life's gonna be a little bit better. Yeah, I definitely agree.
What are some of the things that you do on like a daily or even a long term basis to make sure that you're that you are taking care of your mental health? Um, the past few years I've been into meditation, um, just taking my own time and do it almost on a daily basis. But I'm also the type of guy that you just can't say you need to meditate every day straight on because then it feels like a burden to do it. So I just want to do it when I feel like it. But that's almost every day. So it's something really nice to, to get back to every day or not exactly every day because I'm the type of person that like when you say that I have to do something, I don't want to do it. So if I have the choice to do something, then I probably will. And um, a big passion of me is riding my motorcycle. Um, for me, that's like the only place in the world that I can have my, my hat totally shut off. I'm just busying, busy with, with driving and, and doing the corners and enjoying the view. So when I have like a lot of stress. Most of the times I just jump on my bike and drive wherever. So even after the, after the World Championships this, this week, um, I'm going to go to Italy on my motorcycle. And right now I don't have anything planned, but we will see uh, where I go and where I will sleep and how long I stay, I don't know, but whatever. Um, that's something I'm really looking forward to. Would you have any other pieces of advice for other things for, for other archers or other athletes or other people in general, like things that, that you would recommend they, they do besides meditation or a little bit of travel or, or writing? Mostly it's just um, enjoying the process. Uh, a lot of people that I see coming up in the sport and in whatever sport is that they want to go too quickly, uh, too fast to reach their goals and they just like cut off the steps to get there. Um, I truly believe that when you do all the proper steps, every time, a step at a time, you, you will get there eventually as well, and you have a way better foundation to, to stay there at least. I saw a lot of people coming up like a rocket, but they like also went down uh, really, really fast, and we've never heard of them anymore. So just stay in the moment and, and relax, and everything's gonna work out. I like it. I think uh, we've all probably been in a spot where we've been pushing really hard to get somewhere quickly and trusting that we'll be, we'll be okay, we'll keep progressing. Um, that's hard to do sometimes, but can be really healthy, I think. Anything else? Any other thoughts? That was good. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much, Thanks Steve. So much. We appreciate it, and we're excited to see you shoot this week. And let's wrap it up. Yeah.